Good day, everyone. Uh, we meet yet again for another episode of physics. Um, and today I want us to cover quickly uh, the Doppler effect. Now, um, one of the things that I want us to do when it comes to the section is really to make it as easy and simple as possible uh, as the Doppler effect uh, actually is. So please uh, don't forget to subscribe uh, when you need to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And again, you can reach me on my email, mlungesi.m.ngosi at gmail.com. That's M-L-U-N-G-I-S-I dot M for Mary or for Mama dot Ngosi, N-K-O-S-I at gmail.com. All right, let's get into it uh, very quickly. So when we talk about the Doppler effect, okay, first of all, let's talk about the uh, definition. We say that the Doppler effect is the apparent change in frequency or, or the pitch of a sound, okay, that's detected by a listener when the source and the, and the listener have different velocities relative to the medium of sound propagation. Now, that's a definition and it sounds very formal, ne? but what I want us to do is to quickly just look at it. First of all, um, sound um, actually is formed by vibrations, okay? So as you're hearing my voice right now, it's because of the vibrations that are uh, forming in my voice box, okay? And those vibrations can actually be quantified in terms of amplitude. Now, sound can be um, can be seen as a wave, right? Now, if you look at this, so we talk about the amplitude, which is um, this height here, okay? Depending on where you want to uh, take it from, your reference point from. Um, so we talk about the amplitude of sound. So you can either have a high volume of sound you know we usually use that word a high volume so uh, i can in in the way that i talk i can even talk i can talk louder or i can talk softly so that has to do with what with the amplitude of sound but then um you find people that have a baritone like myself hello Okay, or some people who have a, uh, um, you know, a, a you know, <laughs> a lower pitch uh, that is a soprano. Hello. Okay. So what's the difference there? That's not the loudness of the sound, but that has to do with uh, now the frequency of the sound. So for me, you know, you'd find that this is the wave that I form. Hello. All right. And then for someone with a a tinier voice, all right, uh, you find that these are the waveforms that you find. Now, what is the difference between the two waves, all right? So first of all, the difference is that uh, this one has got a longer wavelength, okay? So we call that a wavelength, the wavelength of sound, okay? All right, or, or, or of a wave. And then we've got, uh, in this case, for this one, it has a shorter wavelength, okay? So if you compare wavelength one and wavelength two, that's a shorter wavelength. But now, if you notice the two wavelengths, what you will notice is that um, this one with a longer wavelength, there are fewer peaks that will be formed. Can you see that? So we call that the frequency. Now we'll get into that in just a little while, okay? So there are fewer peaks that are formed, and as a result, um, uh, uh, in this case, the frequency is low. So um, uh, this one that has um, a shorter wavelength, can you see that I've been able to make far more uh, or many peaks within the same period, okay? I've been able to form many peaks uh, within the same time. So as a result, we say it has a high frequency. Now, I want you to notice something. So the longer the wavelength, right, the smaller the frequency. So there are fewer peaks that I make, 
okay so the shorter the wavelength in this case the more peaks that i'm able to make so the higher the frequency so obviously that means that uh, there is an inverse proportion uh, to the relationship between wavelength and uh, and frequency now there's a formula by the way uh, that we normally use uh, for waves okay i won't go too much into it because i really want us to get into the doppler effect so we usually say v is equals to f times lambda now if you think about it sound is able to travel okay right uh, in this case if you want your sound to travel between two points okay so it means that tr uh, sound does have a a, a speed it does uh, uh, it it is able we can actually have the speed of sound now the speed of sound depends really on the medium that you have so uh, the speed of sound in air would be different to the speed of sound in water and so on and so forth and as a result because of that we know that because uh, 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 the speed is different uh, in different mediums okay um, what will then tend to happen is that we will then need to investigate or find out what is the speed of sound in a particular medium we'll talk about that as we go on now please remember when we use this formula i just give i want to give us a warning all right so when we talk about v that has to do with the speed of sound okay um and obviously this would be uh this is measured in meters per second right and then this is frequency all right this is frequency uh and this is measured by the way in hertz okay hertz just simply means per second all right and then we've got uh, this one here which is wavelength the one that I've, I've shown this is a greek symbol called lambda okay so in this case a uh, wavelength is usually measured in meters okay oh, i didn't uh, so this is wavelength okay right now let's get into uh, some of the nitty-gritties what i want to rush to uh, when it comes to the doppler effect is just simply how to apply it because i know many people have complained about ah oh, i don't know when to use the plus or the minus and so on i want to make it I, I i promise you by the time that you finish watching this video you will understand every single aspect of it i promise you that much okay so um obviously we're going to use the the, the formula just uh, something that i wanted to uh, you to note is that this v that we are talking about here just a pre-warning remember that it is neither the sound of uh, uh, the speed rather of the source or the listener this is just the uh, the speed of the propagation of sound uh, in a particular medium so normally that is either given or, or or in some cases you know i've seen questions where they require you to calculate that just remember when you use this it's neither the sound of the or the speed of the source or the listener but it is rather the speed of sound okay beautiful now i want you to imagine okay uh you know I, I think sometimes because we cannot see the waves of sound maybe let's use something that's a little bit more visual right i want you to imagine something imagine uh, we've got a b okay uh, you can see i'm very good at drawing eh? uh, okay this is the stinging part of the b all right let's put some eyes on it okay so imagine you've got a b right and of course um, uh, i'm just going to be a little bit cruel okay let's imagine that we uh, we catch that bee and we hold it by its wings so you can imagine it's wiggling right uh, so it's making a buzz okay and what we're going to do is we're going to put that bee in water as it's buzzing so can you imagine what's going to happen is that that water now because of the buzzing of the bee okay hagen's principle simply says that the waves will move in all directions 
at the same time, right? So this is kind of a wave form that will be formed because of that B, okay? Agree with me, right? Uh, now, um, wh what's happening here? Waves are forming, right? So if you think about the lines, uh, um, if you imagine the lines to be the peak of that wave, so it's this part here, and then these parts where there's nothing, just imagine it to be the crests of the wave, right? Uh, uh, these deeper parts, right? So what will happen is that we'll see those waves forming and they'll be moving in all directions at the same time, okay? Now, um, so this is when we keep the B stationary, all right? So I want you to imagine, in this case, whatever it is that we observe, right, would be in a sense what uh, it would be the same everywhere all around okay now if i take the very same b and i start moving uh, i'm moving it I'm, I'm going to just imagine that we're moving it in that direction okay now all of a sudden this pattern changes and what we'll then begin to uh, see all right so here's our b here Okay, so we're moving it in that direction. So a pattern will now begin to form and we'll see something that looks like this. Okay. Now, remember, the, the buzzing of the bee has not changed. Okay. What has changed? The fact that we are moving the bee. All right. Now, all of a sudden, what are we able to observe? Now, look at this. On the side that the B is moving towards, the wave forms. Remember, the buzzing of the B has not changed, right? The wave form that is now formed seems as though, and I, I use that word uh, uh, very advisedly, right? It seems as though that the waves now are actually much closer together. The peaks are more closer together. So if you remember our pattern, right, wavelength becomes shorter. So what happens? It seems as though that the frequency, the buzzing on this side seems a bit more frequent than on that side there. So what we are saying is that as it moves, if it moves towards a particular object, okay? So let's imagine there was someone who was observing this from here, right? Uh, you, can very, you can see very well that I'm very good at drawing, eh? Right. So uh, if it was moving towards someone, what are they able to see? They're seeing ripples that are forming, okay? And these ripples are actually, if you think about it, right, they are much closer to each other. But is that what is happening? No, what's actually happening is this one here, right? It's still buzzing in the same way. So in this case, what appears to be, you see, that's why we're saying it is the apparent change, okay, in the frequency uh, or the pitch of sound, right, that is detected by the listener. So now on this side where it's moving towards, they are much closer together. The wavelength is shorter. So as a result, we say, ah, but this one observes a higher frequency than the frequency that is emitted by the bee. Please, I want you to remember this picture here, okay? Right, so this one observes a higher frequency than what is emitted by the bee, right? Now, think about a person that would be standing, or oh, I'd need to squeeze in a person somewhere there, okay, that's standing on this side. Okay, and observing the same thing, right? To them, what are they beginning to observe? They are seeing the very same ripples, but to them, it looks as though the uh, wavelength is much longer, and a longer wavelength would mean a smaller frequency. You're quite right, right? So a smaller wavelength, so the frequency that is observed on this side of uh, when the bee is moving away from us, right? So it seems like the frequency is much shorter, okay? So now, 
that's essentially the 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 the, the Doppler effect. What we are observing here happens when it comes to sound. Okay, right. So um, I want you to imagine. I don't know if you've uh, ever heard. You know, when you are listening to an ambulance passing, right? Okay, so if it's coming towards you, you'd hear that sound. But as it moves away from you, it's as though, uh, you know, there's 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 a, a difference or a change in that sound. You know, um, or uh, sometimes it happens when you're listening to uh, when you hear, uh, you know, say a car that has music playing inside. Right. As it passes you. It's as though the beat of the music is getting slower, right? So all of that is an indication of the Doppler effect. Okay, right. Now, let's keep it short, man. You know, we don't want to bog you down with all of these details. Now, there's a formula that we are going to use. And I want you to please remember what I'm saying to you right now. Okay, so the formula that we use, we say, okay, the frequency of the listener is equals to V plus minus VL, okay, right? That's V plus minus VS times FS. Now, let's uh, let's just indicate quickly. What does this actually tell us about? So, this is the frequency of the listener, right? The observer, okay, whoever it is that's observing. So, if you think about this picture here, we've got an observer here, We've got another observer there, right? So the frequency, the apparent frequency, what appears to this person, okay, right, is equals to V. Now, this V is the speed of sound. And I do want to say this again. This V and that V over there are exactly the same thing. I want you to please remember that, okay? Right. Um, uh, perhaps if uh, I can add something else, uh, please also just remember that frequency is also can also be designated as one over period. So what would be the period in this case? It's the time that it takes to complete one full wave. Right. So frequency is one over period. So in this case, if you are given the time that it takes to complete one full wave or one full cycle, right, you can get uh, the frequency in that way. Right. Um, so as I was still saying, so this is the formula that we're going to use. This is the speed of the listener. OK, so in this case, if the listener is moving, right, um, that would actually be the speed of the listener, right? And in this case, uh, again, that's the speed of sound. And this is the speed of the source. So in this case, it was our B that was moving. Our um, listener or our observer was stationary. And then this is the frequency of the source. Okay. So in this case, uh, this is the formula that we are going to use. Right. Now, ladies and gents. I want to make the Doppler effect, as I said to you, I really want us to make this as easy and simple as possible. OK, right now. What did we say? We said, all right, um, when the source is moving towards a listener, we know what are we going to expect? We expect a higher frequency. We expect a frequency that would be greater than the frequency that is emitted. Now, can I just go back a little bit? All right. Suppose we had an observer here. OK, when the B was stationary. OK, so when the B is stationary, the frequency that's emitted by the source and the frequency that is observed by the listener would be exactly the same. There would be no change. Remember the change only. Oh, uh, of course, in condition that the, the 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 listener is also stationary. The change only begins to take place when either one of them starts moving. I want you to please remember that. When both of them are stationary, no change, right? What the listener, uh, what the source emits, the listener hears. When one of them begins to move. 
right? Either the source moving towards the uh, listener or the listener moving towards the source, right? The apparent frequency now would now seemingly become higher, right? And then uh, if, you know, it's moving away, obviously it would seem lower. Now, because we know what to preempt, right? So what I want us to do is to, um, you know, I, 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 I don't like, um, you know, making people remember things. Like saying, okay, when it's moving away, you use a plus. When it's moving towards, you use a minus. I, I don't like all of that because what it does is that the moment you get uh, under pressure, um, you you seem you 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 tend to forget uh, those kind of things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a method, right? And in this method, I want you to please listen carefully. Okay, uh, what I'm going to say. Now note. You're going to have two scenarios when it comes to the Doppler effect, and I promise you that much, okay? You're going to have uh, two different scenarios. Scenario number one, it's when you've got a stationary source, okay? So suppose our source is an ambulance, okay? Right? So a stationary source and a moving listener, Okay? So V is zero, right? This is our source of sound, okay? But then you find that the source is stationary, but it's the listener that's either moving uh, away or moving towards the source, okay? That is scenario number one, okay? Or in scenario number two, you're going to have a, a moving source, okay, right? and a stationary listener so v is equals to uh so la it was uh, the velocity of the source was zero here the velocity of the listener is zero okay and our source can either be moving towards the listener or moving away from the listener i want you to please remember that those are the two scenarios that we will have when it comes to um, the Doppler effect. Now, I want us to quickly do something uh, for ourselves, right? Let's go back to maths. Uh, you know, something that you learned uh, either when you were still uh, in primary school or, you know, when we when we did fractions, when we uh, when we introduced to fractions. Now, I want you to please note something. There are two types of fractions that you have. All right. And I promise you, this will help you in terms of answering questions when it comes to the Doppler effect. There are two types of fractions that you have. There's what we call a proper fraction. Okay. Now, what is a proper fraction? It's a fraction that has a smaller denominator, right? Okay. I mean, a smaller numerator, rather, and a greater denominator. So... If you take 1 over 2, that's an example of a proper fraction, right? So if I take a proper fraction and I multiply by any number, okay, let's take, um, let's take 4 for argument's sake, right? So anything that I multiply, right, by a proper fraction, the product of it or the result of it, is always smaller than, in this case, uh, uh, what I multiplied, the number that I multiplied with, right? So in this case, if I take that fraction, proper fraction, right, and I multiply by number, I uh, the result is, 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 is something that is smaller, right? On the other hand, I've got an improper fraction. Now, what is an improper fraction? Okay. It's a fraction whereby the numerator, we meaning the number at the top, let's take 3 over 2, the numerator is bigger than the denominator, right? So when I multiply an improper fraction, okay, by a number, let's take 4 again, right? So if I take that, uh, an improper fraction, and I multiply by any number, the result of it is always bigger. Right? So notice this, if I take 3 over 2 times 4, that will give me 
six okay so if i note this result is bigger than the, the number that i multiplied with okay right you see if you remember this ne? i promise you uh, half our work is done why am i saying that now this is our result all the time okay so this is our result and now this is our fraction i'm going to show you how simple this is okay right so this is our fraction and so this is the number that we multiply with now if the source is moving let's say towards the listener what am i expecting i'm expecting a higher frequency isn't it so the frequency of the listener should be higher than the frequency of the source right so in that case what type of fraction should this be if i want a higher result i should have what an improper fraction it means this top part must be bigger than the bottom part okay i'm going to show you this practically all right so um uh, but if it's moving away okay for argument's sake then i know the frequency of the listener must be smaller than the frequency of the source isn't it so all that's simply going to happen very simple it means i must multiply with a proper fraction so if that's going to be a proper fraction so it means that the numerator must be smaller than the denominator isn't it right so um what i want us to do now if you remember this if you remember all of this i want us to take just a typical question i don't want to put too much into the question right i uh, just want us to take a very simple scenario and what i want us to do is to look at it in terms of what we've just done here and thereafter i want us to start tackling past exam uh, typical past exam questions is that okay all right let's get into it all right so i want us to look at this uh, simple scenario quickly right so suppose we've got an ambulance all right that's our source that's able to emit a hundred hertz right so frequency of a hundred hertz all right and say our ambulance is moving at 20 meters per second right now suppose we've got a stationary listener over there okay so let's show that our listener is stationary okay and uh, we want to know okay let's show that it's a listener uh, let's put in the big ears there okay so there's our listener over there right so we want to know what will be the frequency that will be observed by this guy over here all right um uh, in relation to the frequency that's emitted by that source so here's our ambulance bow, 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 okay moving at 20 meters per second and we want to apply the doppler effect of course the thing that we must always get right ladies and gents please write down the doppler effect equation right as it appears in your answer sheet okay so here's our doppler effect equation okay so we're going to say fl that's going to be v plus minus vl over v plus minus uh, vs multiplied by fs now let's just make an assumption let's say the speed of sound in a medium in this medium let's say the speed of uh, uh, sound in this medium is air, uh, the, the medium rather is air right so let's say the speed of sound just for argument's sake is 340 so v remember this is not the speed of the uh, uh, um, uh, source or listener this is just simply the speed of sound propagation right uh, in air so let's say the speed of sound is 340 now ladies and gents i want you to please stay with me all right now what do we anticipate the source is moving towards the listener you remember when i told you about the two scenarios i promise you um in our syllabus you'll only get those two scenarios stationary source or stationary listener 
with the moving source, right? Or the other way around. So in this case, we are simply saying, all right, so our source is moving, our listener is stationary, okay? Right, now typically, what do we expect in terms of the frequency of the listener? Of course, the frequency of the listener should be higher than the frequency of the source. Do you agree with me? Right? So the frequency of the listener definitely will be higher than the frequency of the source. So in this case, I'm going to say, all right, we want the frequency of the listener, right? Now I want you to please note, the listener is stationary. So what are we left with? This is going to be zero. So we just have a V at the top, isn't it? Okay because VL is already zero, okay, the velocity of the listener, right, and then here I've got V and VS, now I'm not going to put a plus or a minus, you're going to tell me which one are we going to put, right, multiply by the frequency of the source, now, we are going to multiply these two things, and I've got a fraction, you remember that, ne? right, so in this case, I know I want my answer to be bigger than what I multiply with, isn't it? So I want my answer to be bigger. So what type of fraction should this be? Ah, I think you get it. Aha. Uh -huh. This should be an improper fraction. So if it's an improper fraction, it means that the numerator must be bigger than the denominator or we can put it this way the denominator must be smaller than the numerator so now in order to make this smaller right do i use a plus or a minus i think you you can see that very clearly right obviously in order to make this smaller right so i'm going to put what a minus remember this and this are exactly the same thing right so in this case, I'm going to have a minus. Why? Because I want this to be a, an improper fraction. So now we know what V uh, uh, is. That's 340 divided by 340. Remember, I want this bottom part to be smaller. Minus, what is the speed of the source? The speed of the source is 20, right? Multiplied by what's the frequency of the source? We said the frequency of the source is 100. So in this case, I've got 340, right? Uh, divided by, okay, let me just quickly grab my calculator over there. All right. Um, so, okay, there we go. I have, all right, that's 340 divided by, uh, 340 minus 20, and I'm going to multiply all of that by 100, okay? And guess what? Definitely, I get a higher value. Can you see that value? It's going to be 106.25 hertz. So the frequency that is perceived by the listener is actually higher, as we anticipated, than the frequency that is emitted by the source. I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. Hey, right, okay, right. Um, you know what? Maybe just to uh, to push this a little bit, uh, so that we we really get um um we we get this in full now. Let's say ob obviously the ambulance is going to move, okay, towards the listener, and then ultimately it's going to move past the listener and start moving away. So let's say um, in our uh, next question, suppose same listener who was stationary, okay, to show that the person is listening, and now the source is now moving away okay still with the same velocity so say it's still moving at 20 meters per second right and still our listener is stationary right we want to know what would be the perceived frequency 
Okay, so this would be F uh, sorry, FS, the frequency of the source. We said it was 100 hertz, right? So what would be the perceived frequency? Okay, so once again, we're going to use our formula. So FL is equals to V plus minus VL. Nothing changes. You still use the same formula, right? So V plus minus VS multiplied by FS. Now, all right. Now, in this case, what do we expect? We anticipate that when the source is moving away from the listener, right, what will happen? You remember the story of the B, right? We anticipate that when the source is moving away, the frequency that will be perceived by the listener will now be less than the frequency that is emitted by the source. Agree, no? Right, so typically this is what's going to happen. So we know the listener is still stationary, right? So this is going to be 340 divided by, once again, uh, uh, okay, I just wanted to say V first. Okay, sorry about that. So let's say FL is equals to V over V and VS times FS. Now, we want to have a result that is smaller, okay, in this case. So what type of fraction should this be? I think you've got it. Of course, it's going to be a proper fraction. So it means that the numerator should be less than the denominator. Or maybe let's put it uh, in case of the denominator. So the denominator should be bigger than the numerator. So how do we make it bigger? Ah, I know you've got it. Of course, we put a plus. I think once you look at it that way, it always makes things a little bit easier. Right, so uh, let's substitute. So we're going to have 340. So this is 340 plus. What is our uh, velocity speed of the source? That's 20 multiplied by, okay, the frequency of the source. We said it's 100. Okay, and then what should be the speed, uh, uh, the frequency rather of the listener? So once again, we're going to do the same thing. So that's 340. Uh, yeah, that's 340 uh, divided by 340 plus 20, right? Multiplied by 100. And what do we get? Ah, can you see? So we get 94.44 hertz. So the frequency that is perceived in this case, remember, the source is emitting 100 hertz, but the listener is perceiving. It appears to him as though uh, that frequency is actually 94.44 hertz. I, I hope that you can, um, you, you understand this analogy of uh, uh, using the, uh, the, the the fractions, you know, proper and improper fractions, okay? Now, with that said, I think um, what I wanted to illustrate to you is quite clear. So, I think without any further ado, ladies and gents, let's do this. I want us to take past exam questions, all right? I've taken these from um, uh, uh, SIP, uh, um, you know, booklets, and then, um, but they are actually from past exam questions. So as a result, what we're going to do is we're going to look at them and try to solve them together. Is that okay? Right. And in the process, what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to be explaining some of the things that uh, we will require, okay, to solve the problems or some of the questions, um, particularly when it comes to issues about, uh, you know, the expanding universe, the redshift, and, and all of that. If you don't mind, I'm not going to explain that now, but I'll explain it as I as I go on ahead. Okay, right. All right. So uh, here's a question, right? It's from uh, past exam question paper. Okay. So um, what we want to do is try to solve this question. Uh, and it says the siren of a stationary police car emits sound waves of 
wavelength 0.55 now notice they are not talking about frequency this time they are talking about the wavelength okay right so they've given us the wavelength and then they say with its siren on the police car now approaches a stationary listener you remember i said to you there are two types of scenarios right so we've got a moving source here and a stationary listener so they say um now approaches a stationary listener at a constant velocity on a straight road assume that the speed of sound you remember the speed of sound our v value right assume that the speed of sound in air is 345 meters per second now all right now let's try and look at our uh, scenario right so we said first of all okay they said a siren of a stationary uh, police car emits a sound wave of 0 0.55 now so initially um they told us that the car was stationary but then later on they say with its siren on the police car now approaches a stationary listener so here's our police car you know my fancy cars okay all right so here's our police car and now it's moving towards this stationary listener so i already know vl is zero right because they told me that uh, um, the listener is stationary right so we know the car is approaching okay right and then remember they also told us that the speed of sound okay in air is 345 okay now they ask us this question will the wavelength of the sound observed by the listener be greater than smaller than or equal to 0 0.55 now ladies and gents please i don't want you to make a mistake of this they are not asking about the frequency now if they were asking about frequency we know that the frequency that will be perceived because the ambulance is moving towards this person what would happen to the um uh, uh to the waves they'd become more compressed they'd be actually much closer together than on this side where the car is actually moving away from right so in this case what do we know we simply know that the frequency would be higher but remember what about the wavelength the wavelength is the distance between uh, 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 two crests of a wave right so in this case the higher the frequency the smaller the wavelength i hope that makes sense to you right so they are asking uh, towards the, the the listener will the wavelength of the sound observed by the listener be greater than smaller than or equal to 0 0.55 well this guy is emitting 0 0.55 wavelength so definitely the wavelength here towards the listener would actually be uh, would actually be smaller than okay so the answer for 2.1 would be smaller than i hope that that makes sense uh, to us okay and then they say name the phenomenon observed in question 2.1 of course i think you already know that that's the doppler effect right okay now they say to us calculate the frequency of the sound waves observed by the listener right if the car approaches him at a speed of 120 so we know them the car would be moving at 120 kilometers per hour all right please just be careful of that we want typically uh, our speed to be in meters per second isn't it so if i were you um the first thing i would start doing is that i would convert that speed uh, to meters per second okay so how do you convert that now i'm going to show you the longer way and then i'm going to show you the, the the shorter way of doing it so kilometers right so in this case what would be the speed it means that my speed would be 120 
but I want to change those kilo, kilo is a thousand, right? So a thousand meters, so it's multiplied by 1000, right? Per hour. Now, how many seconds? Remember, I want it to be in meters per second. How many seconds are there in an hour? Well, there are 60 seconds in a minute, okay? And there are 60 minutes in an hour. So that's 60 times 60, isn't it? Right? So in this case, uh, it's divided by hour. Remember, it's per hour, meaning it's divided by hours, right? So in this case, it's divided by 3,600. Where does this 3,600 come from? From 60 times 60, 60 seconds, all right, in a minute, okay, and 60 minutes in an hour. So this would be 3,600. So, um, Let's see what we get there. So this would be 120 multiplied by 1,000 uh, divided by 3,600. And you get 33.33. Okay. Now remember, we've now converted it to meters per second. Okay. Right. Um, I said I wanted to show you the easier way of doing this. Okay. Right. To convert from kilometers per hour uh, to meters per second. Right. Now think about this. If I said um, a thousand go in, it goes into itself once. Okay. Um, and uh, it goes into 3,600. How many times? 3,6 times. So you can just simply say it's 120 divided by 3,6. So whenever you want to convert from kilometers per hour to meters per second, you just divide by 3,6. Okay. And I promise you, you still get to the very same answer, which is 120 divided by 3,6. And we get, okay, that 33.33. Okay. Right. Just a, a nice little shortcut. Okay, hopefully it helps someone. Right, so now we know that the car, the police car, was moving at 33.33 meters per second. So we don't need to use that 120 kilometers per hour anymore. Right? And what do we want to get? We want to find out um, what is the frequency of the listener. Now, Here's another issue. We did not have frequency. We're not given um, uh, the, 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 the frequency of the source. But remember what they gave us? They gave us the wavelength. You remember that? They told us that the wavelength is what? 0 0.55. Okay. So are we able to get frequency from wavelength? Remember we had that formula about um, V being equals to f multiplied by lambda, right? And if you remember, what did I say this v stands for? This is the speed of sound in a medium, okay? So remember, this v here that we calculated, this was the speed of the source. So let's, maybe let's just write it as vs, if you don't mind. So this v here, right? This V here that we use in this formula, we said this should be the speed of sound in a medium, right? And what did they say to us? The speed of sound is 345, okay? So this would be 345, okay? We want the frequency, and we were given the wavelength as 0 0.55, okay? Right, so what would I do? Divide both sides by 0 0.55. Okay. Okay. So I would say this is uh, 345 divided by 0 0.55. And typically I get an answer of uh, the frequency is 627 point two seven hertz now what is this this is the frequency of the source okay remember our police car they told us that it emits uh, a sound waves 
with a wavelength of, of 0 0.55. So essentially, what did we just calculate here? We just calculated the frequency of the source. Okay, right. Now let's apply the Doppler effect. Okay, now they wanted us to calculate the frequency of sound observed. So, so we want to find out what will be the frequency that will be observed by this guy who is our listener right so what will the will be the frequency that is observed by that guy there right now um let's try and tackle that question okay so now we're going to say now we want the frequency of the listener isn't it so we're going to say the frequency of the listener is equal to okay right so now we're saying that's v plus minus vl v plus minus vs times fs okay right uh, i'm just going to continue over this side here okay so we are not out of the shot of our camera right so now what are we going to say vl what do we know we know that our listener is stationary so that's going to be v so vl is zero okay so we're just left with v there and then at the bottom we've got v and vs now please i want us to note again multiplied by fs right so now i know that the frequency of the listener should be what should be higher than the frequency of the source isn't it okay so the frequency of the listener should be higher than the frequency of the source so now what am I going to say? Ah, so what type of a, 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 a fraction should this be? If I want this one to be higher, you are quite right. It's going to be an improper fraction, right? So it means that the denominator must be smaller than the numerator. So to make it smaller, I'll just put a, a minus there. Okay, so this is going to be 345 you remember the speed of sound in this particular question they said 345 okay divided by this is 345 minus what is the speed of the source you're quite right this is going to be 33.33 okay multiplied by what is the frequency of our source okay the frequency of our source we said that 620 7.27 7, okay and all that's left for us to do okay let me just say multiplied by okay that's 345 divided by 345 minus 33.33 okay and i get an answer of 694 0.35 okay of course um if you had rounded this answer off um you might get just a slightly different answer but i mean it would be more or less the the, the same thing okay right i hope that makes sense to everyone okay so there were two things that uh, you needed to um, uh, take heed of in this question first of all it was that calculation the conversion of kilometers per second of kilometers per hour rather to meters per second and secondly it was that calculation of uh, the frequency okay uh, using this equation here all right so please don't think that it was um, an atypical question right uh, all of those by the way all of those formula you are you are actually given um, besides the one that uh, has to do with the frequency uh, uh, rather the the conversion of kilometers per hour to meters per second you just need to know that okay right and then the very last question they say how will the answer in question 2.3 change okay how will our answer in 2.3 change if the police car moves away from the listener at 120 kilometers per hour all right so what will happen to our frequency if the uh, source moves away of course it should decrease isn't it right so uh, obviously the answer there should be decrease okay super
Um, I hope that answer makes perfect sense or the way that we tackled that question made sense. All right. So what we're going to do is let's take uh, just another question. All right. Um, so that we just explore a little bit further uh, how the Doppler effect um, is applied. All right. Just to uh, save a little bit of time. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to do this question on the same sheet. Um, so they say to us, and here's the thing that I sometimes don't like about physics, it's that, uh, you know, it's it's embroiled with so many words. And, you know, if you've, you, you're not a first language speaker uh, of English, sometimes that's what uh, may make it seem as though it is a difficult subject. But nonetheless, uh, I want us to always be mindful that um, it's not a difficult subject at all. I, I think I've tried to prove that uh, in my videos um, that you can actually do any question on physics. Ne? Uh, and I hope it's helping. Right. Now, let's look at this. It says the siren of a stationary ambulance emits a note uh, of frequency. OK, now note it's the siren of uh, the ambulance is stationary. Right emits a note of frequency 1130 hertz when the ambulance moves at a constant speed now what happens the ambulance starts moving right so uh, when it moves at a constant speed a stationary observer do you see so it's a moving source yet again and a stationary observer right so a stationary observer detects a frequency that is 70 hertz higher than can you see that higher than the emitted that emitted by the siren okay so typically um so here again we've got uh here's our ambulance it's going to emit a frequency okay and then um they say when a stationary observer detects okay uh, the siren it's 70 hertz higher than now when is the frequency higher than the one that is emitted of course this is when the source okay because the source is the one that's moving this time when the source is actually moving towards the listener so in this case here it is once again right so you've got a moving source you've got a stationary listener and the frequency that is detected okay that this guy here so they are telling us the frequency of the listener is 70 hertz higher all right so they had given us the frequency of the source okay so the frequency of the source they had said remember it's 1130 hertz right okay and then they telling us that this guy who's listening hears a higher frequency than the one uh, of the source and his frequency is 1130 plus it's higher than okay 1130 plus 70 right obviously uh, that should give us what a thousand two hundred hertz okay so that's what he hears okay um, and then they say state the Doppler effect in words. Obviously, we've, we've spoken about that earlier on. Um, and we said it is the apparent uh, change in the frequency as perceived by the source, right? Uh, if the source and the listener are moving relative to the speed of sound propagation, right? So you must be able to, to state that. Um, and then they say... Is the ambulance moving towards or away from the observer? Okay, right? So so, so we've already concluded that. Obviously, if the perceived frequency is higher than the one that is emitted, so it must be that the ambulance is actually moving towards the observer. They say, give a reason for your answer. Okay, right. Um, what we've just stated, right? The perceived frequency <clears throat> is higher than the, um, the the frequency of the source, so it means that the 
the wavelength of the emitted or, or of the perceived sound waves right uh, is actually much shorter okay right so and then they say to us calculate the speed at which the ambulance is traveling so what are they looking for they want the speed of the source okay right and i want you to please remember they did say that our station our listener is stationary okay right so we want to find out the speed of the ambulance so again we're going to use our equation right fl is equals to v plus minus vl okay v plus minus vs times fs okay right so let's substitute we know fl okay before we substitute everything right we know vl is zero so that's going to be v over v and vs and then times fs now ladies and gents we know the answer is higher than so what type of uh, uh, fraction should this be and you're quite right this is going to be an improper fraction to make it improper it means that the denominator must be less so in this case it's going to be minus okay right now let's substitute all that we know so this is going to be okay i'm just going to lift this a little bit higher uh if you don't mind okay uh yeah so that it's within range so in this case it's going to be fl right that's a thousand two hundred okay all right they told us that the speed of sound take the speed of sound is 343 right so this is going to be 343 over 343 minus vs which is what we are looking for isn't it and um, multiplied by the frequency of uh, of the source okay that was 1130 okay right now i know many of you tend to panic when you get to this i promise you ladies and gents you see when you've done what i've done here you already have gotten your maximum max all that's left now is just you know your mathematical gymnastics you know some of you were laughing at me when i call them mathematical gymnastics um so all that is left in 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 all honesty is just the mathematics okay so in this case um let's make it as simple as possible for ourselves right i'm going to say um okay let's do this let's divide both sides by 1130 okay so that i get rid of that okay so this is 1130 so what i did on the left on the right i'm also doing on the left and then if you want to you can cross multiply right uh, so i'm going to say um okay uh now nah, in fact let's just make it as easy as possible i'm going to say 1200 okay divide by 1130 okay uh, 1130 and that gives me 1.062 okay so in essence i've got 1.062 okay which is equal to 343 three, all over um uh 343 three minus vs now please remember all i just simply did was just uh, to cancel that out so you can take that as um uh, uh, divide by one right so now let's cross multiply this multiplied by one okay i'm just going to continue over to that side okay so 343 three times 1 i'm cross multiplying now okay 343 three times 1 that would give me 343 three, okay which is equal to okay 1.062 okay into 343 three minus vs okay now note this is just uh, sorry i tried to squeeze that in there okay uh, i hope you can still see it 
right uh, maybe let me just rewrite it 343 is equals to 1.062 into 343 minus vs okay still within our brackets there so if you want to you can just multiply those in so that's 343 okay 1.062 fortunately i didn't uh, erase that off my calculator i can just multiply that by 343 okay i get 364.25 okay right minus okay remember it multiplies in here it multiplies in there so that's minus 1.0662 times vs okay please don't forget that okay right if i take that to the other side what do i have 343 minus 364 so that's minus uh, 343 there okay uh, you should be able to get minus 21.25 okay which is equal to right remember you still had minus 1.062 vs okay right I, I really went for you know these questions that um, i know would give you guys a little bit of a headache right so what do i do divide both sides by 1.062 okay but what i do on the left i do on the right or the other way around so that cancels with that and your vs value right you have 21.25 uh, divided by 1. Point, uh, sorry um, 1.062 okay right and i seem to get an answer around 20 meters per second okay right you can try it out of course um you know i played around with uh, mathematics a little bit uh, and what it did is that um, it gave me 20.0 something. Uh, some of you probably may get something a little bit less than that, 19.9 something. Okay, nothing wrong with that. Uh, it would be uh, more or less in the same ballpark. Okay, right. Okay, uh, that's out of five marks. And please note, in all honesty, in all honesty, if I can just quickly show you, you know, this is how, of course, we'd mark the correct use of the equation. Would mark your correct substitution there, your correct substitution there. And all that we've done actually is just worth one mark, okay? Because typically this is not a maths exam, okay? So we're not really going to, um, you know, be fussy on the mathematics side of things, okay? Right, now let's talk very quickly uh, the last question. They say the study of the spectral lines obtained from various stars can provide valuable information about the movement of the stars. The two diagrams below represent different spectral lines of an element. Diagram one represents the spectrum of an element in a laboratory on Earth. So they're taking an element on Earth and then uh, diagram two represents the spectrum of the same element from a distant star. Now, ladies and gents, uh, without necessarily wanting to go too much into the details, right? Now, what happens is that when you take a certain element on Earth, it gives you a specific absorption spectrum, okay? Um, so these lines that you are actually observing here would be absorption spectras, right? Um, as I said, I don't want to go too much into the details uh, lest I make this lesson what it's not about, okay? So now... There are two things that happen. Now, I want you to note, when we talk about the visible spectrum, um, we talk about this Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Now, when you talk about the visible spectrum, when we go in the direction from red, red has got the shortest, uh, or rather, the, the longest wavelength, meaning that the frequency of red light is actually uh, um, 
the frequency is the smallest okay so frequency of red is the smallest and as you go uh, um, towards violet it increases going towards violet so all i'm simply saying is that frequency here okay so if we think of it in terms of frequency so it's smaller on the red side okay and it increases as you go towards the violet side okay right so it increases uh, as you go towards violet so now what we're simply saying is that if you notice spectral lines okay which is how basically they would determine uh, whether a star is moving away or or towards the earth so they observe the spectral lines of a particular element on earth and they observe the spectral lines of the same element uh, from that star now if you notice here here's this the element on earth here's this uh, uh, spectral lines that you observe there now when you observe it from the distant star look at what has happened the lines can you see this line that was appearing here has shifted but where has it shifted to it has shifted towards the blue okay so it's shifted more towards uh, the blue so they put blue on this side they put red on that side okay right so now it's shifted more towards the blue and now if you remember what i said i said when we go towards the violet the blue side right so we know that the frequency is increasing in that direction okay right now if you think about the uh, the doppler effect when do we observe a higher frequency when something is moving towards us right so this is simply telling us when you notice it's moving towards the higher frequencies which is the blue frequencies right so therefore this is telling us that particular star must be moving towards earth Ooh. all right so in this case why how do i know that uh, because it's uh, the the spectral lines are actually moving to the blue side on the other hand ladies and gents obviously there are instances and uh, more prevalent rather is that we'll find instances where when we observe the spectral lines uh, of an element from another star uh, it would actually be uh, showing us that it's moving more towards the red okay they call that red shift by the way this one they, we, they, we call it a blue shift when it's moving towards the blue now if it's moving towards red remember the frequency of red is a smaller frequency right so what is that telling us it's telling us that that particular star is actually moving away from the earth all right and by the way when they study uh, um, uh, most of these stars they realize that um you know the, the 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 spectral lines are actually more shifting towards the red uh, when they observe um their spectral lines so as a result this is what has given rise to the uh, theory that actually the universe is expanding all right so when you think about redshift always uh, i want you to think about an expanding universe okay right so um i wanted to 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 explain that okay so they say is the star moving towards or away from the earth in this case it's blue shift so it must be moving towards the earth and they say explain by referring to the shift in the spectral lines in the two diagrams okay and then you'll explain that it's moving towards uh, the blue which uh, has a higher frequency right and that's showing us that um uh the 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 star is actually moving towards earth okay right um i hope that kind of makes sense now what i want us to do very quickly is just to tackle the last question and then i think i'm going to leave it there okay uh, in terms of the doppler effect all right um quickly so they say uh, the data sh uh, below uh, was obtained during an investigation into the relationship between different velocities of a moving sound source and the frequencies detected by a stationary listener once again ladies and gents sources moving stationary uh, and the listener is stationary for each velocity 
the effect of wind was ignored in this investigation, right? So here's our experiment. So in experiment one, they had a velocity of zero, right, uh, for the source. So uh, typically, it means both the source and the listener were both stationary. Can you see that? Now, if you remember what I said at the beginning, so if both the source and the listener are stationary, right? So here it is. So here's the source stationary. Okay, if you remember B, and the listener is also stationary. So whatever the source emits, all right, the listener perceives. So this would be the only time when both of them are stationary. It means the frequency of the source would be equal to the frequency of the listener. Are you with me now? Right. Now notice, when that was the case, the frequency was 900. The frequency of the listener was 900. Now I want you to think about that. Okay. So if this guy hears 900 when this guy is stationary, then what is this guy emitting? It means he's emitting a source of sound at 900 hertz. Okay, right, I hope that makes sense. Right, so now look at what happens. All of a sudden when the, uh, uh, when the source starts moving in experiment two, the source starts moving at 10 meters per second, look at the frequency. Now, all of a sudden, it begins to decrease, okay? So now the frequency of the detected frequency is smaller than the frequency that is emitted. What does that already tell you? The frequency of the listener is smaller than the frequency of the source. Definitely, for me, it's telling me that the source must be moving away. Remember, listener is stationary. The source is moving away from the listener. Okay, right. Now, uh, they say write down the dependent variable for this investigation. Okay, so remember what depends on what? It's the frequency of the source that depends on the speed of the, uh, uh, sorry, it's the frequency of the listener that depends on the speed of the source. The more I change the speed, the more the frequency changes, okay? So our independent variable, what we keep changing in the experiment, what, what is it that we kept changing? It's the speed of the source, right? Uh, the velocity of the source. But what changed as a result, that's the dependent variable. What changed as a result is our, is the speed of the, I mean, is the frequency of the, um, uh, um, of the listener, okay? Right, I hope that makes sense. Right, they say write down, okay, we've answered that. They say state the Doppler effect in words. Okay, I know that you already can do that. Okay, so I won't uh, dwell on that. Now look at this. Was the sound source moving towards or away from the listener? All right, uh, we know definitely now that the source was moving away. Why is that? Because the detected frequency is less than the frequency that is emitted by the source. Okay, and they say use the information in the table to calculate the speed of sound during the investigation. Okay, right. Oh my goodness, I, I really hope uh, if there are any teachers that are watching this video, please uh, just send a shout out uh, because I, I really want this to not only help our students, but I'm hoping that it will also help uh, us to teach this subject better okay to find better ways of explaining because uh, um, sometimes we can um, uh, make physics difficult uh, unnecessarily so uh, so please um, um, uh, just send a shout out you can send me an email and tell me uh, how you're finding uh, this lesson okay right they say use the information in the table uh, to calculate the speed of the sound during the investigation okay now they want us to find out what the speed of the sound is. Now, in this case, you can use uh, any of the data there. Now, so we know the frequency of the source, right? So frequency of the source is 900, okay? 
um, let's take experiment two, if you don't mind, right? Let's say, so the frequency of my listener when is 874, right? But this is when the source is moving at 10 meters per second. So the speed of the source would be 10 meters per second. And remember, it's moving away, right? Uh, so, so if the source was moving in that direction, then I know there's my listener there, okay? Uh, he's hearing something that is less than the source, what the source is emitting, okay? Right, and then, um, right, let's use that information there. So this will be FL, that's V over V plus minus VL, okay? Just want to get S times FS. And then, uh, what's the frequency of the listener? Okay, so we know that's 874, right? Now our listener is stationary. So this is going to be V. We don't know what V is. That's what they wanted us to investigate or to, to find out. So divided by V and Vs times Fs. Now, I've already substituted there. So that's 874 is equal to V. Now, I want for uh, the answer to be less than the 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 you know the the frequency of the source so what type of fraction should this be okay that should be a proper fraction isn't it so proper fraction the denominator is bigger than the numerator so definitely this will be a plus okay so this is v over v plus now in this case what is vs we said that's the velocity of the source we took the instance where it's 10 uh, someone could be asking, yeah, but what if I took the one uh, experiment three? It really doesn't matter. We'll get the same answer, right? Right, multiplied by the frequency of the source. If you remember there, we said it's 900, okay? So all that we're simply going to have here, ladies and gents, is just uh, mathematical gymnastics, right? So, um, okay, let's do this. So uh, we can say this is equal to okay that's 900 times v that's 900 v over v plus 10 okay which is equal to 874 now please remember this is over one isn't it okay right i'm just going to lift that a little bit so that you can see it okay so uh, we can cross multiply 900 v times one that's 900 v okay and 874 into v plus 10 this is going to be 874 v plus remember it's this times that this times that okay so this is going to be 8740 okay take that to the other side 900 minus 874 v right uh, this will give us uh, 20 6v okay which is equals to 8740 we can divide both sides uh, by 26 okay and our answer is v okay let me write it here so our answer is v um okay uh, so that's 87 Four zero divided by 26 and we get 336.15 so the speed of sound we get that to be 336.15 please if you can verify that for me okay uh, i'm just doing this in a rush now because uh I want I didn't want this video to be this long and then they say the spectral lines of a distant star are shifted towards the longer wavelength uh, of light so the longer wavelength of light so it means that's towards the red isn't it they say is the star moving towards or away from the earth so definitely if it's a red shift this is telling us that um, it is moving away from the earth 
uh, it's moving uh, towards the longer wavelength okay great stuff um ladies and gents uh, i know i promised that this is the last question but i got a question from one of the students um uh, on 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 something that they were that they were doing um, so I want us to quickly look at that question. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of the question, uh, but I want us to just quickly look at the approach of it. Um, one of my students uh, had asked me, and I, I, I thought maybe it would be of benefit to you if you were to look at that question. So I'm just going to go through that question with you now. All right, so the question had to do with um, uh, a scenario where there was an ambulance, um, which is our source that is moving, but we didn't know what the frequency of the ambulance is, nor did we know what the velocity, the speed of the ambulance is, the frequency of the source. And then they told us that when the ambulance, I'm just going to make an example, when the ambulance is moving uh, towards a stationary listener, so we had a stationary listener, the listener perceives let's say a frequency of 170 hertz right and then they say the same ambulance now passes the uh, listener and then they find out still it's moving at this at a constant speed and then they find out that uh, when it passes uh, the frequency of the listener now changes to 130 hertz right so now the question was calculate the speed of the source as well as the frequency of the source i just wanted to show you how to tackle that question all right so now what you're going to have is a simultaneous equation okay so now what i'm simply going to do is i'm going to have an equation okay just a separate equation on this side okay uh, i'm going to say all right for scenario number one Remember, when the frequency of the listener, uh, or rather when the source is moving towards the listener, I know the frequency should be higher than, okay? Right, uh, so that's our frequency there. So in this case, I'm going to say FL, it's V plus minus VL over V plus minus VS times FS, okay? So now I'm going to have FL is equal to, I know my listener is stationary, right that's v v s times f s once again i know it's moving towards so in this case i know that um, the answer that i'm expecting here should be higher so the perceived frequency should be higher than the emitted frequency so what type of a fraction should this be right once again we know that's an improper fraction right so it means that the denominator must be smaller than the numerator so we know our frequency of the listener that's 170 okay and then our v value oh sorry um uh, sorry v was given as 340 meters per second that's the speed of sound in a medium right so this is going to be 340 divided by 340 minus vs remember what we didn't know was vs the speed of the source as well as the frequency of the source okay so what i said is that um i don't want to actually um bother myself much with the mathematics here so what i did was 340 times fs this will give me 340 fs right divided by 340 minus vs and this is equal to 170 okay right now in this case we can cross multiply Okay, this is over 1, so this is 340 FS is equal to, okay, sorry about that. So that's 340 FS, which is equals to 170 over 3 uh, times 340 minus VS, okay? So I left it as uh, this equation here, and I call this equation 1. And then I went to the second scenario, right, where I said, okay, I need to do the exact same thing, but now the frequency of the listener is going to be V over V plus Vs. Remember, now I'm going to have a, an, a, an improper, uh, rather a proper fraction here, 
right times fs right because it's moving away i know i want that frequency to be smaller than so in this case it's going to be a proper fraction right so now i've got 130 which is equals to v that's 340 over uh, 340 plus vs we didn't know what vs is remember it's the same one as this side multiplied by fs okay so again i'm going to do the very same thing i'm going to say okay this is over one so that's 340 fs times one so now i'll have 340 fs okay which is equal to 130 into 340 plus vs okay so i'm going to call that equation two now if you notice on both equations i've got 340 fs on the left hand side so if their left hand sides are the same then obviously it means the right hand sides should be the same so what does that say it means that equation one is equal to equation two right so 170 into 340 minus vs should be equal to 130 right which is the right hand side here into 340 plus vs okay right and then what you can simply do is just uh, uh, say divide by 130 just want to make the maths easier for myself here okay so i've got 170 divided by 130 okay you can put that as 17 over 13 uh, actually in fact let me do exactly that okay into 340 minus vs okay which is equal to now what you have on this side that's 340 plus vs okay right and then um, ladies and gents, I think uh, all that's left for us to do here is just the mathematics. So that's 17 over 13 times uh, 340 times 340. Uh, and I get um, this is 444.62 minus 17 over 13 VS which is equals to 340 plus vs okay right i'm, I'm taking it in detail so that um, uh, you'll see what i did there right so i group all the like terms together so triple four uh, six two minus 340 when i bring it over to this side minus 340 um so i've got 104.62 okay which is equals to now if i take this to the other side you see it becomes positive right and i've got vs there so i've got 17 over 13 right plus uh, vs so i've got 17 over 13 vs plus vs now remember there's a one here right so uh, i'm going to say 17 over 13 Ugh. 17 over 13 okay plus one okay um i get 30 over 13 vs if you wanted to keep this as a fraction uh, there's nothing wrong so that's 104 104.62 and then to get rid of this fraction what do you do you just multiply by the inverse of it okay so that that uh, cancels that but what you do the side plus 13 over 30 okay so vs um, just going to write it on this side so vs would be equals to 1 13 over 30 uh, so you've got 104.62 multiplied by 13 over 30 okay um, i got a value of 45.334 sorry that's in meters per second sorry i'm out of space there okay and then how do you get the frequency all you simply do is that you're going to substitute that answer into any of the two um, uh, so you can either take this one here 
okay uh, so I'm just simply going to say 340 FS is equal to 170 into 340 minus 45.34 okay right and then uh, all you simply do okay so that's 170 into uh, sorry 340 minus 45.34 okay and then you divide all of that by 340 ladies and gents you can do that for yourself at home uh, i seem to get a frequency of 147.33 hertz and now please i want you to note um, this frequency here, if we compare it to what we had uh, in that question there, I knew that the frequency of the source, the perceived frequency should be higher than um, uh, um, the frequency of the source when it's moving towards. And look at this, definitely 170 is greater than 147. And I know that the frequency of the listener should be smaller than or should be lower than the frequency of the uh, source when it's moving away and um, definitely 147 is greater than 130 so the frequency that the listener hears is much smaller than that of the uh, of of the of of the source uh, so it, this is how you would ta uh, tackle this type of a question and i hope that has helped um, even to those who had questions so ladies and gents uh, this is all there is to the Doppler effect. I hope this video helped. Please, you are more than welcome to send those questions through. And um, I still do advise if you need to get in touch with me, uh, my email. But otherwise, uh, you can throw a comment. Um, as I said, if you're a teacher and you find this material helpful, uh, please just uh, also let me know how we can collaborate together. Uh, to try to make our nation a better nation. But otherwise, uh, I'd like to leave it here. Uh, thank you so much for um, uh, listening. Thank you. Remember to subscribe. And I'll see you when we do uh, another lesson next. Shop, shop.